Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? To be honest, I am always in a rush, and being always in a rush means that I always make mistakes. The mistakes I make typically are typos in spelling mistakes in communications that I send out, and they embarrass the heck out of me. So I have been on a lifelong struggle to try and overcome that. Now, I will admit right out of the gate, the best thing that one can possibly do to overcome spelling mistakes and grammatical errors is A, be educated more than I am, B, have somebody proofread your content before you send it out. And in a perfect world, both of those things would happen. But the reality of my existence is neither of those things are going to happen. So consequently, I have to find another way to overcome my spelling and grammar limitations. Now, I use a tool called Grammarly. I've used it for quite some time and it's great for my newsletter when I slow things down a little bit and I send out a newsletter, run it through Grammarly, it checks the spelling, it checks the grammar, does a few other things which I will talk about in a moment and it helps me out a lot. Where I have had virtually no help is in short communications, things like Facebook and Twitter, where I am, as soon as I've written the post or written the little tweet, uh, the comment that I'm engaged in, my brain is already on to the next thing and I just don't take the time to proofread it. And even if I do proofread it, there's a good chance I will miss the error. So what are we going to do about that? Well, Grammarly has introduced a brand new plugin a browser plugin extension, which has proven to be incredibly valuable to me. Perhaps it'll be incredibly valuable to you as well. So we're going to take a look at Grammarly's new plugin today on Dotto Tech. Spelling and grammar is the bane of my existence in so many ways. It just has driven me crazy as for as long as I can remember. Uh, and I, and as I mentioned off the very top, if you have time, if you have a, if you have a proofreader that can work with you, that's obviously going to be the best way to go. But for those of us that don't have the budget or don't have the time to 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 employ a proofreader then finding a technological solution is important. Now there's spell checkers built into virtually every app and some of them work better than others. But Grammarly has really, I think, kind of caught the, the, the bull by the horns with adding this new browser extension to their stable of tools. When you install it, you install it into your web browser and it, it, we see it here in the very top. I've enabled mine. Now I do use the premium version of Grammarly. I pay on an annual basis for the premium, premium version, which gives me basically all of the features that I want because <laughs> to be honest, I can use all the help I can get. And it does, you know, it's not going to work if you don't pay attention to it. So if you still just rush ahead and bull ahead with things, you're still going to make mistakes and publish them and put them out. But it does give me better access to correction and uh, tools and, uh, and notifications that I do have a problem than any other way that I've done things. So let me just kind of walk you through a little bit of a narrative now of the places that I've screwed up in the past and where Grammarly seems to be helping me out, especially with this new extension. So the first place is in short, quick posts, things like Facebook, where I'll, you know, as if you're, you're commenting on Facebook, you're already thinking about the next post before you hit publish on the one that you're on. So if I'm just going along very quickly, it catches the little errors because it's running constantly in the browser. It's looking at all of your text and in your web browsers and here we see it and it gives us a little count which kind of always reminds you that it's there and it gives you a little green arrow or a little green button when, it, when everything's okay but here I've got a problem and if by hovering my mouse over top of the problem it allows me to correct it immediately now other tools do the same kind of thing they will allow you to either right click on a spelling error to find it or do that sort of thing but the way that Grammarly has included the rollover, the pop-up, it doesn't get in its own way. A lot of tools tend to get in their own way when you do this. Grammarly works really elegantly and efficiently. And once I've got that little green, I can be pretty safe to click post. So it's given me a visual reference that it's okay before I do the post. There's a point for Grammarly. Exact same thing happens in Twitter. As you're about to make a mistake in Twitter, you've got the count going and you can see there that you've got issues and it allows you to go through and quickly correct them. Just by rolling my cursor over the top, I can go through and I can correct all of the different errors. Now for short form, this is great. Going through all of these different short form posts that you have in every different social media, I think you can see the value of this right away. The next place that it really starts to work for me is in email when I'm doing a little bit longer responses. Now the cool thing that happens here is here's my email reply window. But if I click down, if I look down here in the bottom, it says I actually have three issues here and three advanced issues. If I click on correct, what they do is they actually launch a, it's like a light box editor, which has a compressed selection 
of Grammarly's tools available to us. So we can actually edit in the Grammarly interface, which I'll be talking about in a few more moments. But as you can see, it's more than just in the editor for the email. It's got down the right-hand side all of the different corrections that you might have. And it's on the left-hand side, it's got the different tools. So if we make all of our corrections here, if I correct this if right now, it says I possibly confused this word here. Oh, there it is. There's another few. Did I collect? Uh, there it is. Possibly confused wor words. Reached. I, what I meant to say is reached. So I can just correct that. If you have reached the point of no return, or E, do you mean reached? Yes, I do. So you go through and you can work through the whole document this way, including the grammar suggestions as well as the spell check. And if you don't want one or the other, you can turn on and off things like the grammar checking here in the preferences. And it tells us what's turned on and what's not turned on, including the plagiarism checker, which I will talk about more in a few moments. But once you've gone through and you've corrected it in the Grammarly editor, you can just tap on back to Gmail and then it populates all of the content from the editor back into the, whatever application you're in. And this works for Gmail, but it works for almost all different editors in the same sort of way. The ability to go in to this, to this pure Grammarly interface in order to do your editing. Point to Grammarly, I like that and I use that. And having these tools available to me and knowing the, the rhythm that those tools work in is making it easier for me to get into a routine and a habit of checking my content before I publish it. Now the last area that I want to talk to you about, or I, yeah, I think it's the last one today, is in the full Grammarly editor. Now this is me in Grammarly with all of my different documents. So you can actually go in and increasingly, as I do my writing, I'm doing my writing right within the Grammarly interface because I'm going to be checking and I'm going to be moving it into Grammarly anyways. So rather than writing in Word or any other, uh, any other platform, I write right within Grammarly. And you can see that I've got a pretty large collection of documents here uh, as I'm going. So for example, right now I'm working on an email follow-up sequence for a campaign that I'm working on, for a sales campaign. And you can see that. Here's the first letter, and it's nice and clean. I've already gone through and I've cleaned it up. And as you go down, you see all of a sudden you will start to see the mistakes coming in. But down here, this is the reality of my writing. Because I get on a roll, and I just keep writing away, and I make typos, and I make mistakes, and I make grammatical errors, but I like to pound away and just kind of go through it all and then go back and edit it. Using this tool makes me think about the editing process and it's turning me into a far better writer as a result because in my Grammarly tools, I have grammar turned on and it's telling me about grammar errors, punctuation, and I'm asking it to even comment on sentence structure. So I'm asking it to look at everything in my document that it can and give me feedback onto what I'm doing, uh, what it considers that I'm doing poorly. Now it's not perfect. It will look at sentences sometimes and say, Steve, it's, it's, that's not a good sentence structure. But that gives me the opportunity to look at it, critically think about it, and then make a determination myself whether or not that's the way that I want to express myself. It's just basically giving me a uh, kind of a mirror to reflect it off of or some feedback to cause me to pause, think about it, and then determine whether or not that's exactly what I wanted to say. And what I'm noticing it's helping with a lot is clarity because when it's r putting that I'm writing too long a sentence and it's just looking at simple algorithms for that sort of stuff but if the sentence it thinks is too long I can decide that it's okay but I do stop read it over and then think about what it might look like if I shorten it up if I break it into two or do that that sort of stuff so it's giving me some really positive feedback in that area now there is one other I think major area that Grammarly really makes a difference and that is cause is preventing embarrassing mistakes when I'm writing different posts in my research I'm often at friends or people who I respect or I like to read. I'm often at their website and I'm reading through. So here's, here's, my, here's my friend, uh, Razor Social, is Ian Cleary's site. And as I'm reading through his post, his most recent post, and I do a lot of writing about YouTube, he's made some really nice points about the length of videos in YouTube and what's, uh, what length is optional. So quite often what I'll do is if I, even if I'm thinking about doing a story on this topic maybe a month or two from now, is I'll copy and I'll clip out this content. I'll store it in Evernote so that I can then use it again later on when I'm ready to work. I can look at that opinion and then I can rework it. But the problem is sometimes you forget that this is somebody else's writing. If you've been editing a document, working on it, and then you go back and you go back into it, if you haven't properly articulated within it that this is Ian's copy, I might accidentally think that this is something that I wrote a few months ago and then publish it in my content and taking ownership of it myself, which would be an error. It would be wrong. It wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been on purpose, but it would be an embarrassing mistake. Look, look, look at how Grammarly 
will help save our bacon at that particular point. Here is, I've got this little thing called plagiarism test. I just created this document and right now it's looking through the document and if you take a look at it, it's a pretty well written document and as a matter of fact, it's getting a score of 94. That's a nice thing that, that Grammarly does is it gives you a score of just how, how, many, how few errors it finds and the closer to 100 you have, of course, you've got a better document. And I would say, well, this is good. I can probably pu publish this uh, in my blog and it's going to do quite well. But if I go now and the last thing I do is turn on the plagiarism checker, it turns it on and look at what it does. It flags right away. It says, wait a minute, Steve, there's unoriginal text in here. Say what? I did. I thought I wrote this whole thing. I click on this and look what it comes up with. It comes up with the source, tells us where it is. And if we decide that we want to use it, it gives us proper academic citation from MLA or APA or Chicago uh, uh, citation so that you can include a proper citation in the document if you happen to be publishing it. So of course, students and people writing academic papers, this is a boon for them to be able to use this to help them with their citation as they're writing papers. But for you and for me, this is just going to stop us from being embarrassed that we accidentally published somebody else's content and took credit for it ourselves. Overall, I believe that Grammarly is making me a better communicator. It's causing me to, it's helping me to avoid mistakes, which I was making in an increasing, uh, increasing frequency. As life gets busier and I get sloppier, I've just noticed an increased number of mistakes. So when I take the time and make Grammarly a part of my writing process, I'm finding that the mistakes are dropping and the surprising bonus is my writing is getting better. I hope you found this video today to be useful. Now, there's three ways to stay in touch with us here on Dottotech. The first, please subscribe to this channel. Secondly, is subscribe to our newsletter so you'll hear about our upcoming, our upcoming live events. And you can also check for yourself to see if my writing is indeed improving. And finally, Dottotech is a community-funded site supported through the crowdfunding site Patreon. Uh, we're basically supported by you, the people who view this channel. So if you want to know more about what supporting Dottotech looks like and what perks are included, then I encourage you to drop by and have a look at our Patreon page. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.